In this video, we're gonna learn three exciting ways to remove a background in DaVinci Resolve. Let's do it. The examples we're working with here exclusively deals with ladies holding iPads with a light blue button down for some reason. But the process is the same for any kind of footage, don't worry. But we're gonna go over two scenarios here. We have if you shot something on green screen and if you didn't. Don't worry, you can remove the background from both of them. Let's do the easy one first. This green screen. Just in case you're not familiar, the reason why people shoot on green screen is because it makes it really easy to remove a background. How easy? Well, I'll show you since you asked. Here in the edit page of Resolve, if we open the effects panel, that brings up this little buddy right here. And I'm just going to search for K-E-Y for key. And that brings up a few different keyers here. A keyer is the fancy word for something that removes a green screen. We're going to use this 3D keyer and just take this and dark it onto the green screen clip like that. You'll know it worked when there's a little FX badge right there. Then you can select it and then go over here in the inspector. And here we have all kinds of intimidating little controls. You don't even need to know how this works, just do this. Make sure you select this first icon here and then go down to this lower part of the viewer and make sure that the effects badge is on. We're looking for open effects overlay. That's what we want to be looking at. If this is good and this is good, then we can click and drag on the green screen and just draw a little stroke over anything that we want to disappear. As we do that and let go, ta-da, the background is gone. Now, how the heck does this work? What we're doing is we're giving Resolve a sample of the color that we want to get rid of. And when we draw our stroke, we're just kind of giving it more colors. And so any color that we kind of draw over, it's going to try and delete from the video. And it does a pretty good job. Now, if you were to zoom in here, let's just zoom in here 300%, you'll notice something terrifying. And that is this little green outline here. <laughs> That is a dead giveaway that this used to be on green screen. Now, when you're making something like this where you're kind of putting it on a graphic background, it's sort of understood that it's on a green screen, but it's best not to have this kind of little green fringe on things. And so we can do a couple things to make this a little better. First thing we can do is here under behavior options, we can select soft and that's going to help this just a little bit on her hair. Second is we can push this despill up a little bit and look what happens. Look what happens when we despill it. We push the despill up, it gets rid of that green. Now, this is much better looking on her hair. Looks so much better, but there's still this kind of stroke on her shoulder, which isn't super. So to kind of get rid of that, we can go down here to matte finesse. Now, the word matte has to do with this selection that we're making, this black and white selection that you saw earlier. And as we twirl down matte finesse, there are a few things that we can do to make this a little bit better. One of them is this in slash out ratio. And so I can take this and push this in a little bit and look what happens. I push it in a little bit and it kind of eats away at that little line. The problem is that it makes it jaggedy and terrible looking. So what we can do is just add a little bit of blur to this. And as we blur it a little bit, that's going to make that line look a little better. The more we blur this, the softer that's going to look, but it's going to kind of make her hair not look great. It's going to be just a really solid line on her hair. This is sort of one of the big things about green screen is you can do it quickly or you can do it well. <laughs> In this video, we're going to be doing it quickly. Ideally, what you'd do if you really wanted a very, very nice green screen is you would essentially select different parts of the video and do a different green screen key on each one. So we might have a key kind of like we're doing down here on her body and then a much softer key on her hair that looks a little bit more like this. So we have this nice hair and then we kind of combine this with a different key here on her shoulder. But because we're not gonna do that, we're just gonna kind of bring this in and blur it a little bit to kind of average this out and make it look a little nicer. Now, for a lot of stuff, for, I mean, if, if you're just wanting somebody in front of a background, I mean, this is gonna be fine. Nobody's really gonna care that her hair doesn't have this perfect, nice, wispy edge like her hair should be. It's really pretty forgivable when you're doing something like this that's kind of putting her over graphics. 
And I'd say overall, this is a pretty decent key when it comes to uh, just doing a quick key that isn't supposed to be like a photorealistic visual effect. So that's a great way just to remove the background really easily. If you have a green screen, just use that 3D keyer. But wait, there's more. One more thing that I wanna point out is here under output at the very bottom where it says final composite, what you can do is switch this to alpha highlight BW. You wanna check this and make sure that this is pure black and pure white. That's the best way. Because what happens sometimes is you'll have some gray in here. So let's just copy this over so I can show you without ruining our key. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of gray in this background like this. And what happens is it will put some more of that green screen back on the background and it just doesn't delete it all. It kind of partially deletes it and makes it partially see-through. And so even when you put it on a background, there's still kind of this green going on in the background there that you really don't want to be happening when you're green screening something. You want to cleanly get rid of that green screen. And so always, 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 always go to your effects and make sure that you check the alpha highlight BW. And if there's still gray here, what you can do is go up here to this eyedropper and add another stroke like that. And that will usually fix it with this 3D here. The other thing you can do is go to your matte finesse and push up this black clip. And what that's going to do is just make more of this black and that can help too. Either way, you want pure black and pure white. Other than the edges, it's okay if the edges are a little bit gray because it'll make those a little bit softer and blend a little better. But this output if we switch this to final composite, now we have a much better key. We still have that green edge that we'd have to deal with, but we want a pure black and pure white matte, okay? Okay. So that's the easiest way to remove a background is if you've already shot it on green screen, you can just take that away. And of course, the better job that you did shooting a nice smooth green screen, the easier it's gonna be. But what if, what if you shot your video of a lady holding an iPad without a green screen? <laughs> what then? Well, there are a couple different ways that we can get rid of this background. The first way, probably the easiest way, is with Magic Mask. Now this is only available in the studio version, the paid version of Resolve, but I'll show you what it does. You can just switch over to the Fusion page, select this media in right here and hit Shift Spacebar and type Magic and hit Enter, then, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to know anything about fusion. All you do is just draw on top of the person that you want to keep and it cuts it out magically, amazingly. It's probably not going to do the best job with her hair here. In fact, this is kind of not great, but I can hold down alt and I can draw some strokes around this part to get a little bit better edge on her hair. Also right here. And that's pretty good. And this is with the faster preset. You can also switch it to better and that might give you a little bit better detail on her hair. It's actually looking pretty nice. And then once you have this selected, once you have your selection great, all you do is hit this button right here, this track back and forth, and we let it track. And depending on how much movement there is in the shot, what her background is like, all of that kind of stuff, it's going to do its best to cut her out from the background. Now, let's switch back over to the edit page to see how well it did. Oh, baby, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Considering there's no green screen at all, it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of our background. So that's quick. And again, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing like a quick meme, this can probably be just fine like this. Nobody's going to care if there's a little bit of chatter here on this mat. If you want this to look nicer, you might have to spend a little bit more time cutting it out and changing your mat. One thing that I've found is with the better mode, it keeps some of that hair detail, which is great, but it also kind of flashes like this and it's not necessarily the greatest. And so something we could do would just be go back here and switch it to faster, and we'll just track this again. And let's look at the faster preset. So faster, it doesn't fuzz out the edges as much. There's generally a little bit less chatter, but there is still a little bit, but it gives us this really hard, nasty edge on here, which again, we can fix by going here to mat, this second tab here, and then pushing up the blur of the mat a little bit. So we can just zoom in here and blur this a little bit. That's gonna give us a much better edge. Yeah, but it's still a little bit chattery, right? And that's just the nature of Magic Mask is sometimes the edges are a little bit chattery. 
you're not going to get this beautiful pristine edge like you would with a green screen. That's just kind of how it is. But that's the second way that you can cut something out and remove the background is with that magic mask. Now, if we want to use this clip and get rid of the background, but we don't want the chatter of the magic mask, there is another option, a third way to do this that's a little bit more work. You have to know a little bit more about Fusion, but it can give you some pretty nice results. So let's jump in. I'm just going to go to the Fusion page. And here what we're going to do is some rotoscoping. If you're unfamiliar with rotoscoping, it's basically tracing something out and then animating that path that you traced. So for instance, I could grab a polygon mask, which is this little icon right here, take the output and plug it into the blue part of our media in. And I can go up here to my inspector and turn this polygon off real quick. And I can do something like draw a mask around her like this. And what this will do is just isolate her. And so as I switch over here, we get a much cleaner edge that's not going to kind of flicker. But the problem with this is that when I play this back, she's like kind of looking through this cutout window and it's not great. It doesn't really make any sense. It's bad. So what we have to do is animate this path to follow her as she moves. Nope. Which if that sounds like a lot of work, yes. That's a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, it is very hard to make look good and takes quite a bit of experience, but it can be done. If you're at a point where you're like, magic mask isn't working, I didn't shoot this on green screen, please tell me how to roto a little bit. Here's a couple of quick tips. If you're gonna roto something, you're probably not going to do a mask that goes around her whole body and head and hair and everything like this. What you're gonna do is isolate the different parts of her body that move separately, like her head, maybe her arm, her torso or other arm, depending on how much movement there is. So you're gonna animate multiple shapes to make this mask. And the other thing you're gonna do is track the motion so that you don't have to do quite as much work. For instance, I could grab this and hit shift space bar and type P-L-A-N-A-R. And that's gonna bring up a couple of tools, our planar tracker and our planar transform. And I'm gonna select the planar tracker and add that here. And this will allow me to select a piece of our footage here, like her face. I'll go over here to motion type. Instead of perspective, let's do translation and rotation. Go here to reference time and hit set. And then I can track this forward and backward. And that's going to track the movement of her head. Then I can click this button, create planar transform. And what that'll do is that'll give me another node right here that has captured the movement of her face. So I can get rid of this planar tracker now. And so if I wanted to put some text on her face, I can just run it through this planar transform and then merge that over and say, you know, face and just put this right over her eyes and look, it kind of sticks to her head. That's exactly what we want because that's going to help us move our mask. I'll just make a polygon mask, plug this into the yellow input of the planar tracker, and let's just draw a little outline of her head and hair here. Again, depending on how much movement there is, you might need to do more or less work than this. Okay, that looks good. And instead of bringing this into the merge, I'm gonna hold shift and drag this out and just plug this into the mask input of our media in like this. And now check this out. We've cut out her head and it moves along with her head. And it, you know, it's a, it does a pretty good job. Pretty good job. Let's do the same thing for her body. So again, let's just grab this. I'll just undo this. Just kind of set this aside. This stuff is her head rotoscope here on our media in. Again, I'll bring up our planar tracker, make a new planar tracker. And this time we're going to track her body, her torso here, like this, set, translation, rotation, track forward, track backward. That's gonna make a bunch of little tracking markers in here. And it's gonna figure out the movement of everything, kind of average it out. And then when we hit create planar transform, that's gonna give us a transform node, which is going to capture the movement. We'll just merge this over, grab a polygon mask, plug that into the yellow input. And now we'll do just not that great of a job. <laughs> Tracing out her shoulders. Good. So that should follow her. Yup. Then let's put these together. I'm just gonna grab a merge node and put these both together so that what we have is a mat that looks a lot like that mat we were making with the green screen earlier. And that's going to be kind of a, pr a pretty okay roto of our lady here. And we'll plug this into the mask input of our media in. 
and check that out. Let's go back to our edit page so we can see what's going on. And now we have a roto of our talent here. Of course, my mask is all jacked up. There's some stuff wrong with it. Is it perfect? No. Is it possibly less distracting than the magic mask? Maybe, because we don't have that chatter around the edges. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. And the technique that you use is going to be based on whether you have green screen, kind of how you shot things, how much movement there is, and how nice you want it to look. And of course, generally, the nicer you want something to look, the more you probably have to jump into Fusion and do some work. If you want to learn how to make things look really great in Fusion, there's a free course right there. Mm. You want a sip? 